Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Thursday, November 9th, and this is your morning prayer. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, the book of Esther. We've got that today and tomorrow. All right, so the book of Esther recounts um, the events surrounding Esther, a Jewish woman who is um, who finds herself uh, queen of, of Persia um, through a series of events, and uh, through whom, through the actions of whom, uh, she, uh, well, God saves and preserves his people, that there is a, um, a plot to destroy the Jews that is uncovered, and through the actions of, of Esther, she, she saves her people. Um, well, God saves them through her. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a change of pace from the other uh, prophets that we've been reading, because we're you know, hearing a lot of visions, a lot of oracles and whatnot. This is pretty much a straightforward narrative. So we've got kind of a single um, story that we're we're hearing here, and we're it's divided into two days for us. So um, today, primarily, I'm just going to give you kind of an overview and some of the background behind Esther. Maybe uh, p- pick out one of these verses to focus on, and then uh, tomorrow we'll give a little bit more attention to just sort of what's going on in there. So uh, the events of Esther take place between uh, chapter six and chapter seven of Ezra. So it's happening right along the time that we've been been reading. Uh, we don't know who wrote it. Um, there are some ideas, but we, we don't know for sure. And um, Esther is an interesting book because depending on who you ask, it can be a somewhat controversial addition to the Bible. Not everybody agrees that it belongs in the Bible. Um, some think that it would better fit in, in the Apocrypha. Now, what the Apocrypha is, uh, open up a, a, a Catholic Bible and you'll see a bunch of books in the Old Testament that we don't usually see in, 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 the, in, in our Old Testaments and in most of our Bibles. Because the, the Apocrypha, the Apocryphal books, are, are included in some of those Roman Catholic editions of, of, or translations of the Bible. Um, you can actually get a, 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 just a, a separate Apocrypha that contain all these writings. In fact, uh, if you uh, go to CPH, our uh, Concordia Publishing House, they sell a, a, a collection of Apocrypha a book um, to go with this. Now, um, what these Apocryphal books are, are Jewish writings that happen between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. So that intertestamental period. There were some writings that um, were religious writings uh, but never quite rose to the level of being considered inspired, inerrant word of God. Um, certainly, they, they cover some historical events, and, and there is some religious um, stuff going on there. They are held up as useful in some contexts, that they are um, that they're, they're good writings, they're, they're interesting writings, for sure, but they're just not at the same level as the rest of the books of Scripture, what we call the canon. Um, if we really want to get fun, there's, there's a couple different words that we use to describe books that, that we all agree are part of scripture and books that we dispute are part of scripture. Um, so the word, uh, homologumina, homologumina, <laughs> you're never going to use that word, um, are the books that are accepted by everybody. Everybody agrees that yes, these belong in scripture. Anti-legomina are books that are disputed. Um, and Esther exists in kind of that disputed gray realm. And, you know, it, what books are considered belonging and, and don't belong can vary depending on, on who we're talking to. Um, Luther considered um, at one point, I believe, um, you know, the book of Revelation and the book of James to be somewhat disputed and maybe not necessarily sh- should be included in, in the canon. Um, but it, it, it doesn't really matter because... Everybody else agrees that it belongs in the scripture. So um, just like one person expressing a, a dispute about a book doesn't rise to the level of, of questioning it, it's, um, 
if if the, the church at large throughout history has regarded a book as being part of scripture, then we all accept it as part of scripture. Esther is is in this place where it was accepted as part of scripture. I mean, it was included in the canon really from the get go. Um, later on, we have people who who question its place in scripture, um, and there's there's some various reasons for that. Um, there's let's see. Well, one of one of the 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 big things is that um, the claim is that the Book of Esther never refer- references God, or at least references uh, God's name. Okay, there's no mention of of God's name at all in Esther. There, um, Esther isn't quoted from in the New Testament. That's um, often kind of a, a thing that's treated as as important. Um, it wasn't found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. One of the, the greatest finds of Old Testament uh, manuscripts. Um, there's there's the issue of the, the festival that is created in, in Esther, the festival of Purim, um, because, you know, this was not one of the festivals that God gave Moses at Sinai. So Purim is kind of a, you know, do, is, it, is it a proper festival or not? Um, the, the festival itself involves kind of a wild festival involving drinking, so that's never a pious sort of thing. Um, some of the, oh, I'm sorry, my phone's going off. <laughs> so I'm trying to get up. I'm already up. Um, so uh, some of the Jews uh, don't um, did uh, did not appreciate Esther so much because of the uh, spiteful way that um, the uh, the Jews in, in the Book of Esther reacted towards the end when they plot against them and then it was foiled and then they kind of took revenge on those people and it it, it, it definitely is kind of like oh huh, this is it's, it's an odd kind of thing that goes on there um and so there, there's a lot of stuff that that people have raised as possible objections with all that being said um none of those complaints invalidates esther as being part of scripture and in fact um esther kind of being very unique in its tone and the way it's written and, and uh, its content actually seems to, in, in, well, in my mind, um, make a case for why it, it should be in scripture and why, why it does belong there because see, it, it's um, it is written in a style of a Persian narrative, which makes sense because that's where it took place. It took place in, in Persia. Um, it is, it has a very secular style to it. Which, you know, initially people say, well, see, that's why it doesn't belong in the Bible. But if it's a book that was written by somebody connected with Esther or in that, in, uh, of that time, in that place, well, what, who would be writing it? It would be being written by maybe one of the Jews who ended up in Persia, basically part of the exiles who kind of um, were, were scattered into that area, who had become acclimated, accustomed, uh, cultured, 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 whatever, um, kind of assimilated into the Persian culture. So um, the the way it's written, the style, and, and everything else kind of accurately would reflect um, a, a Jewish exile living in Persia at that time. So it, it seems to kind of make sense. Um, and it's just, um, you know, the, the lack of, of piety or worship um, would likely ref- reflect the lifestyle of those people that, you know, they, they had assimilated into their, their Persian surroundings and the Persian way of life. Um, and it's just, that's, that, that really works. Um, now, it do- and it certainly does not discount the fact that, um, you know, God was working through all this, you know, even with a people who had been taken from their land and resettled and had kind of adopted the surrounding culture, they still maintain that connection to their God. Even if um, Esther is presented in more of a secular kind of format, the the fact remains is that we see God working through Mordecai and through Esther in order to preserve the people uh, so that the, the Jewish people would all be killed off. So that way they, they're still, with, you know, the, the exiles would be able to rebuild the temple, rebuild Jerusalem, resettle that area so that eventually it would lead to the birth of Christ. Um, so we do see God working in the background here, even if he's 
not um, explicitly referred to in the foreground. So, um, so yeah, there, there's Esther's an interesting book. Um, very kind of simple, straightforward sort of narrative, but a lot of the surrounding entailments with it, it, it makes it an interesting read. Now, I did say we'd probably get to a little bit of scripture here, but we're running out of time. There's a, there was a lot of ground to cover with the background, but that's actually fine because we'll have plenty of time tomorrow to discuss the content of the book and um, probably one of my, my favorite uh, verses from the text. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look at that tomorrow. So today is a good day to to get, get associated or get a, uh, associated. Get uh, um, get comfortable with Esther a little bit. Read the first five chapters, and uh, then we'll get into it tomorrow. So there you have it, your introduction to the book of Esther. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Thursday. I uh, hope you have a great day. Hope it goes well, and I will see you tomorrow. Until then, peace be with you.